Becky Lynch was uncomfortable with her match from Survivor Series. Plus, a major AEW team are out of action, and a former WWE star was backstage at the Impact tapings. It's in the wrestling news right now. So Becky Lynch uh, was in possibly... The best match of the night at Survivor Series. Agreed. Agreed. Her and Charlotte Flair uh, had a heck of a time. It and, it was really a, did. and it was a real... It was. It, it felt different. There was it a different did. energy to it, wasn't there? There really was. Scrappy, very scrappy. Very, um, just, just... I don't, I don't know how to describe it other than it was just a pure fight, wasn't it? It really felt like a pure fight. Both women feeling as though they weren't cooperating with one another almost in certain points. But whether that was just to make things feel a lot more real, mm. who knows? They just, they, they actually made magic. I think uh, on Survivor Series night. There's, a, there's an amazing promo that Becky Lynch cuts a few minutes after the match, and she gets very emotional in it. Like she's, like, she's in tears, and she talks about how, how, how her friendship. With with Charlotte is 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 through mm -hmm. and how sad she couldn't know if she's happy or sad about the whole thing and I think a lot of people are asking the question on whether or not this is like oh this is clearly a work I yeah. you know this is yeah they they had a match that was choreograph choreographed and they protected themselves they had a storyline which they told but I genuinely believe this is something that's very much rooted in truth yeah me too me too especially from from what we're about to read out from here what we're about, as well yeah exactly so Seth Rollins had a chat with Ariel Helwani uh, around after Survivor Series. And he said, I can he said, I can't relate to the experience that Becky probably went through out there because there's nothing about going into the match that she was comfortable with. I imagine it was an extremely cathartic experience for her, though. I've been out there and had matches where there wasn't that much tension, and it's brought me to tears when I come back. I can only assume she's in an interesting place, hopefully a good place, because they both killed it out there. I was really proud of everything she did and everything she has done and did tonight, meaning Survivor Series. Uh, yeah, not comfortable going into that match oh, is, the, wow. is the key takeaway there. Mm. And I get it. Again, it's just obviously it's a storyline that they, they, they push through television. We talked about it on the news because it very much sort of blurred those lines. Yeah. And um, but it's 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 very much rooted in a very sad truth that these two used to get on mm -hmm. incredibly well and now don't like each other very much. Wow, that's that's such a big thing as well, isn't it? But with, with all that they've been through as well, like um I mean it's it's a testament to both wrestlers that they can still put on an incredible match whilst mm. still having this tension between them too, just yeah. because they know each other so well as well. And um, you know, granted, I don't necessarily think you should always uh hearken on the um real life experiences between people to make good storylines, mm. but this does make for a very good storyline. Yeah, I mean, Mick Foley was always uh, a, a great purveyor of this, where he said that, like, you know, he'd go to what he called Promo Land, yeah. a lot of his books, where he would kind of find a little something in his core mm. that he would latch onto. A lot of some of the, you know, when he did some, pro he did some promo stuff with The Rock, and he said that he pulled on some of those uh, experiences he had with the Rock, where yeah. like they weren't positive ones, yeah. and, and he, you know, and you know, he, and he tapped into those real mm. emotions to bring them out. And I think those are your best promos, and some yes. of your best stories are are, are deep seated in that reality. Uh, but that was, of course, that promo was twenty four hours before we played before we played Find the Egg on <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Find the magic egg with oh. Vincent K. Oh. Uh, let's head over to the AEW mm. side of things. By the way, if you were that cluster of fans on AEW Dark that sang Ty Conti, Ty Conti, thank you. Oh, Genuinely bless made you. my day. Bless you. That's, That's awesome. On AEW Dark, they sing Ty Conti. That's Take so Conti. cool. That's so cool. You're the best can of Coke for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of AE Dub, Matt Jackson gave a little indicator of where the Young Bucks are at on BBC, yeah, didn't he? He With did. He said, uh, I'm not medically clear to even wrestle. Nick is not medically clear to wrestle. He re injured his bruised heel. The one I made fun of, that was a real injury. Joke is on me. Now my neck is kind of giving me grief. And uh, yeah, the Young Bucks are expected to remain on television, but they'll be unable to compete for a little while. Uh, and this is where, Tom, I think we see Adam Cole starting to take control of everything. And then perhaps we see Kenny Omega finally come back and then things dissolve between the elite. Ooh. Well, this is a good, this is a good, <laughs> Ooh. 
Ooh. This is a good bit of timing for Adam Cole. Yes. Because like he he now seems to be the only healthy member of the Super <laughs> He does. So he's so let's let's he will step into the the lead role. I think yeah. almost by default. And Definitely. Yeah. Here's to some some interesting faction mm. wars down the road. Um, Staying with uh, the other members of the elite, Kenny Omega uh, is, you know, he's, he's off to have numerous surgeries, yeah. multiple surgeries for serious injuries. Still had time to get to Wales, though, over the weekend. <laughs> Was it was it the Wales Com it was the Wales Comic Con he was at, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Sometimes they do the Wales Comic Con in Telford. He wasn't oh, in Telford. We've gotta know, we've gotta I'm, know. I'm gonna check where he was, because I know sometimes they do the Wales Comic Con in Telford. Mm. Um, so apologies to Telford. Uh, yeah, the there you go. Wales Comic Con. Oh no, the Telford takeover's next year. Oh, okay. I okay. Think. Mm, he's thinking. He's um, thinking about. I don't know what am I saying? Because I saw my mates Joey Sanchez and Luke Basham there. They would have gone to the Telford one. Okay, either Wales or Telford. <laughs> Either Wales or Shropshire. Um, big love, big love to you if you were there. So Kenny Omega uh, was there, mm -hmm. but um, his wrestling is currently on the side for the time it being. Is. He officially vacated the AAA Mega mm. Heavyweight Championship over the weekend, but he has indicated that when he is healthy, he will be back mm. for it. We don't know what the main event's going to be for this this Triple Mania show for uh, December the fourth. Yeah. There is some rumblings they're going to do like a big multi-man match to crown a new that would be like nice. champ. I think that would be very nice to see. I think I'd like to match. see that. You know, and I saw. I think it was Sports Illustrated. Conan was talking to them, and uh, he said once Kenny is back on track, you know, back in the ring again, he'll be the first person coming for that belt. So, I mean, that's nice to see. That is nice to see. Obviously, it's it's unfortunate that Kenny's had to vacate the belt just because of all the injuries and everything, but it, you know, you got to take priority over your health and everything first before anything else. And uh, this just adds a little bit of something extra to a storyline is all somewhere down the line, doesn't it? So, yeah. it'll be it'll be it'll be really nice to see who wins it, who knows. Uh, I would like to see Andrade with it. Oh, okay. Andrade would be just perfect, I think. I think, yeah, I think he'd be a good shout. He's got that. He's got. He's got all the gravitas mm -hmm. to have to carry that. But hey, we'll find out before December the fourth with any luck what the crack is there. <laughs> uh, Fine Alamon, a former WWE star, backstage at the Impact taping. Something we haven't seen really doing anything within the wrestling mm. world since 2017. We're talking about Danielle Moine, formerly Summer Ro Summer Ray, yeah, from WWE. So she was uh, an NXT singles competitor. She was the dance partner of Fandango, and uh, she she had a back injury in 2017 and mm. stepped away and uh, reports say she was backstage at Impact Ooh. over the recent tapings Ooh. the ones that were building up too hard to kill with mm. uh, possibly considering a return to the ring possibly visiting mates yes yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Like, you know what? It's like I think you'll you'll be with me on this when I say that Impact Wrestling probably has the best women's division. Yeah, it, one of the best women's one divisions the on best the planet. Divisions. You know, I without think, a doubt. Yeah, just a great selection of talent there. And, mm. Hey. Summer Rae, I think, can bring something to I it. I think she can. Oh, like, you know, her segments were always really fun. The stuff that, you know, with the Rusev and Lana thing. Mm. That was interesting as well, you know? Like, I think she can definitely bring something to the table. We'll keep an eye on that one and when we know more. And as we get more news throughout the day, you will know more. And cultaholic.com. What are you working on today? Anything ooh, exciting? Ooh, ooh. I'm doing a story of, Tom. I'm doing Whoa. a story of uh, Heroes of Wrestling. Oh! Ooh. So it's interesting. It's very interesting indeed. I know. It's, I, I think I know what you're talking about when you say yeah. that. And if you know, you know as well. It's very exciting. Look out for that on the YouTube Ooh. channel uh, very, very soon. On the podcast feed, not only do you get air wrestling news every single day before you wake up, like if you want bespoke little 10 minute bites of here's the news and everything you need. We've got that for you on the podcast feed every single morning. Uh, we have the classic Nitro review back this week with Sam Driver Ooh. and myself. We're watching every episode of Nitro. Nice. Uh, the classic Raw review returns with Jack Kins and I next week. We're watching every episode of Raw. The classic <laughs> Smackdown <laughs> review with Matthew Gregg and I returns on the weekend. And this past weekend, we did a very special deep dive into the history of the WWF Martial Arts Championship Insane. from the late 70s. You need to calm down with I all your work, I can't calm sir. down. He, he does so much. Go and support this man. He Sup does so much Support for my pseudo He's brand. He's incredible. He's incredible. <laughs> Better yet, follow the podcast feed at Cult Search Cultaholic wherever you get your podcasts from. And until we next speak, keys, keys. Love you, bye. <laughs>